All right. Well, I think we'll um, we'll start the webinar. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, today we will be holding a webinar to introduce you to the uh, wonderful world of the Alto Open SPR system by uh, by Nicoya. Um, today we will be talking about how the Alto system can uh, enhance the quality of your research data when it comes to SPR. We will be talking about reducing the amount of human error that is prone to be in uh, SPR experiments. And we will be also talking about increasing the quality of your data uh, through the Alto system. The webinar today will be hosted by uh, Dina Nikolaus. Uh, Dina holds a PhD in chemistry and has been with Nicoya as a application scientist for a few years now. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to uh, hand it over to Dina. And please, in the meantime, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to uh, put them in the chat. Uh, and then we will go through any questions that we have uh, after the presentation and during the Q&A. Dina, please take off. Thank you so much, Martin, and thank you for having me today to talk about ALTO, the label-free solution for biologics research. I will start the presentation by giving you a bit of background on the Nicoya story and why we do what we do, then introduce you to ALTO and its unique capabilities, and lastly, I will be highlighting relevant applications for biologics research. Well, we are a team of 100 people focused on supporting our 500 plus customers across 50 countries and constantly innovating. This has resulted in over 200 patent applications being filled on our products and has allowed our customers to publish in over 250 peer reviewed publications spanning all disease types and therapeutic areas. Our mission is improve human life by helping scientists succeed and we've been on this mission since 2012 when our uh, founder and CEO Ryan Denome uh, started the company. Ryan was frustrated by the lack of affordable um, label-free solutions on the market and he spent five years developing our first benchtop SPR solution called the Open SPR. Since its launch in 2015, uh, the Open SPR has democratized and given over hundreds of uh, researchers access to SPR data and this has motivated Nikoya to keep on innovating and launching in a 2021 Alto, the world's first digital uh, surface plasma resonance instrument. Uh, by talking with scientists we have realized that while SPR was a critical technology in labs across the world, the existing solutions were still uh, challenging and this challenging were mainly tied to the traditional fluidic systems. On top of that, the complexity of traditional tools require significant time and costs for maintenance, servicing, as well as significant hands-on time and expertise in order to run an assay successfully. To overcome these challenges associated with traditional SPR systems, we developed Alto, the world's first digital SPR system. Nicoya took all the complex traditional fluidics found in SPR instruments and integrated them in one single disposable cartridge. By using the technology called digital microfluidics or DMF, we're able to move discrete nanoliter sized droplets across the cartridge by applying voltage to individual electrodes, as you can see in the uh, image or in the video on the slide. And the integration of uh, DMF with our nanoplasmonic biosensors in that one cartridge allows the researchers to get the kinetics data they need from that lab on a cartridge. Let's look closer at the different components of the Alto platform. Alto consists of three main parts. The first one is the fluidics free benchtop instrument pictured on the left which has a touchscreen uh, inbuilt PC. Uh, over here, we also see the loading bay where we would insert our cartridge, the, car the disposable cartridge that contains the sensors, fluidics and reagents all in one. And finally, our software, the Nico system, ties everything together with the seamless user experience, with the ability to both build and analyze 
uh, your experiments remotely from any internet connected device if you are to opt for the cloud mode as the system has two versions, cloud and local. Dive, looking closer at the instrument itself, it has 16 independent channels, it has no fluidy components, it has two temperature zones with one at the sensor area and another for reagent storage. As I mentioned, the built-in PC that has uh, helps uh, has on, on them guided protocols for the user to follow when, when loading their cartridge. And once the cartridge has been placed into the instrument, the cartridge fluid inserted and then the samples uh, pipetted inside, it's time to see what happens on the cartridge. And there are several activities that are being performed. First, from those uh, two microliter wells for ligand and analytes that are loaded, only the 350 nanoliter sized droplets are being dispensed with high accuracy of uh, less than 3% CV. Because the aqueous solutions are found within a silicon-based oil, there is no evaporation. And those nanoliter sized droplets are taken next to the mixing area. In the mixing areas, the activities that are being performed include mixing, splitting and merging. Running buffer droplets are being mixed with sample droplets in order to perform automated serial dilutions. There are five serial dilutions, threefold dilutions each, that are prepared in this mixing area. And then those uh, analyte concentrations are being queued from lower to higher and brought to the sensor area to look at our interaction. So at the uh, sensor area, that's where uh, we're measuring our interaction between the ligand and the analyte. As you see in the image, the droplets do not interact with each other, which results in minimal dispersion. And because it's the user that defines the uh, contact time at the sensor surface, you can envision an unlimited interaction time, though these days we do uh, tend to limit it up to four hours at maximum, between 30 seconds and four hours. Looking closer at the cartridge and its capabilities, uh, the Alto 16 cartridge has 16 sensors, and currently it's a one-to-one -one referencing format, meaning that there are eight lanes in total. The types of immobilization that Alto allows is both direct and capture. The surface chemistries available at the moment are native carboxyl, but we also have surface kits that allows you to functionalize the surface with biomolecules like streptavidin, uh, protein A, or antihis um, molecules if you need a, a, a specific uh, functionality on the surface. The dilutions, as I mentioned, from the two microliter uh, solution loaded on the cartridge, there are five automated dilutions, threefold each, and for a carboxyl sensor chemistry, there are up to 48 unique analytes here seen in purple that can be loaded. And because due to the five automatic dilutions, we can obtain up to 240 binding curves per one cartridge. And the affinity range uh, that Alta supports is from picomolar up to millimolar uh, interactions. If you are familiar with SPR, you might know that in traditional SPR systems, you might require liters and liters of buffers. All the reagents needed for one alto cartridge are less, uh, combine less than two ml of reagents, and Nikoya has a suite of uh, optimization kit that include both regeneration solution, immobilization buffer for you to help with your assay optimization. To sum up this first part of my talk, I would like to uh, say that Alto allows you to save precious samples. It requires only two microliter of purified or crude sample. It liberates your team because there is no manual degassing, there is no manual dilution, everything is automated on the system. And because Traditional instruments have a limited protocol flexibility because of fluidic pathways, because of the hardware. With Alto, we can completely change the fluidic design with software updates, meaning the protocols will continue to expand and improve, and you can continue using your instrument for many years to come. 
And now the part that I find the most interesting would be diving into some of Alto's applications for biologics research. Alto provides biologics researchers the simplicity of an ELISA while giving also the depth of data you get from SPR. It is especially well suited for scientists in antibody discovery and development, in RNA therapy or vac vaccine development, and it is compatible with a lot of biomolecules, including protein, peptides, antibodies, and it is also crude sample compatible. The, the platform's power lies in its versatility. It has unique advantages at every step of the biologics discovery process. In the early stages of hit identification and screening, Alto enables scientists to quickly screen hundreds of samples. After finding the hits, one might need to quantify them, so Alto allows that as well with a large dynamic range. And also once the hits have been identified, uh, the they need, might need to be ranked. And this is where kinetics and affinity characterization will come in. And lastly, uh, but as important, is understanding if, um, for example, for antibody uh, discovery and development, where though understanding where the epitopes uh, are and uh, further characterizing that can be done with the epitope characterization module. And lastly, but not least, Alto is also capable of testing different um, conditions in parallel to optimize stability, performance, and formulation of biologics. And we're going to look first at assay optimization and what can be done on one single cartridge. In row R, that stands for reagents, we have up to four different regeneration solutions that can be tested on one cartridge. In well R8, we have our uh, running buffer that can be used for all the ligand immobilization steps. In row Cs, because we have eight wells, we can test up to eight unique conditions for immobilizations. The buffer wells, eight in total as well, uh, can be tested for different buffers or having additives like BSA or higher concentrations of twin. And for rows I, D through I, where the analytes are, we can um, change either the contact time, as I mentioned previously, the contact time can be changed between 30 seconds up to four hours. And also we can have test different analyte concentrations in order to better bracket our KD and get a reliable uh, kinetic data. And here we have an example of a mini uh, pH and regeneration scout for the uh, over on the left we have our uh, ligand immobilization uh, data so four different sodium acetate uh, buffers were tested with phs ranging from 4.5 up to 6.0 and the one providing the best immobilization response was sodium acetate with a ph of 5.5 for this particular ligand Regarding regeneration, once again, four different regeneration solutions were tested. This time, 10 millimolar glycine HCl with pH ranging from 1.5 up to 3.0. And uh, the best uh, regeneration solution was found to be 10 millimolar glycine HCl with pH 2.5. In uh, SPR, what most of the applications cover is kinetics and affinity. A lot of the work done with SPR is for kinetics characterization of interactions. Alto is able to provide high quality kinetic characterization. It can perform both a single cycle kinetics and a multi-cycle kinetics and provide information regarding the association rate constant, the dissociation rate constant, and the KD. It also has a mass transport limitation compensation within its analysis uh, software, if this is something your system needs. Uh, for a carboxyl sensor with 48 unique analytes that can be loaded on the sample with the five automatic dilutions, up to 240 interactions can be provided uh, per cartridge. And the data, once the assay is finished, the data will be presented like this. We'll have our raw data, we'll have our uh, fits, one-to-one uh, -one landmark fitting, for example. 
the information we're going to have it both next to our uh, raw data and fitted data and also it's presented in a table under under the um, and the graphs and as an, an example of uh, the use of alto for characterization antiviral targets this was a collaboration with sino biological where 12 different antibody antigen um, interactions were characterized uh, all of them were characterized uh, by single cycle kinetics and multi-cycle kinetics. For this assay, the antibodies were immobilized on the surface using uh, protein A capture, and then it was the influenza A nucleoprotein that was for single cycle kinetic titrated uh, with increasing analyte concentrations, five concentration and only one single dissociation, or with five different association and dissociation steps for multi-cycle kinetics. Uh, I mentioned that there were 12 unique uh, interactions. Out of those, five were against influenza A nucleoprotein and two against the influenza A hemagglutinin. And the KDs uh, were found in a, in a wide range from nanomolar, low nanomolar down to picomolar. And those uh, values were obtained using a one-to-one -one Langmuir model. Going from characterization of antiviral targets to characterization of antibody drug, and in this case tocilizumab, an immunosuppressive drug used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and a severe forms of arthritis in children. It is a humanized monoclonal antibody against the interleukin-6 receptor. And why it is important to characterize this interaction? Because in, in the last uh, decade, therapeutic, uh, maybe two decades, therapeutic monoclonal antibodies have become one of the fastest growing classes of drugs, while interleukins and their signal pathways are an important drug target for treatment due to the vast number of problems their improper regulations presents. And using single cycle kinetics, uh, what was investigated was the interaction between interleukin-6, its receptor, and tocilizumab with KDs uh, spanning from picomolar to nanomolar. The, this interaction was characterized both as uh, having the receptor, interleukin-6 receptor, as a ligand, uh, with the KD uh, determined by alto of 32 nanomolar and a literature value of 47 nanomolar, and also the having tocilizumab as the ligand, uh, having decreasing, have, seeing that the interaction between tocilizumab and the receptor has a much higher affinity with a KD of 300 picomolar uh, uh, versus uh, 32 nanomolar for uh, just interleukin-6. And uh, using ALTO, we were able to get this kinetic data for deeper insight into the mechanism of action. And it is really important to characterize this interaction having the um, uh, analyte and ligand in different uh, conformations. And going from biologics to biosimilar, uh, biologics have transformed patient outcomes worldwide due to their ability to treat diseases with higher precision compared to small molecules. Meanwhile, biosimilars, which are highly similar copies of existing biologics, have increased affordability to biologics due to their abbreviated approval process. In this application note, ALTO was used to characterize biosimilars derived from plant forms vivo express technology demonstrating its ability to provide high quality data while reducing time to answer. And using single cycle kinetics, just like before, uh, the biosimilar analytes Keytruda and plant forms Pembrolizumab were titrated from low nanomolar up to 100 nanomolar against its PG1 ligand. Analogous kinetic results were reported for on rate, off rate, and KD. And as we can see in the in graph D, uh, for our uh, reference channel, there was no non-specific binding observed of the PD-1 um, of the uh, antibody. Staying in the world of monoclonal antibodies and biologic drugs, characterizing 
anti-tumor monoclonal antibodies is critical to understanding the interaction with FC gamma receptors. But because these uh, gamma receptors are very challenging sample times to get quality data, it's really important to characterize this interaction and get as much information as possible. And ALTO was used to characterize the interaction between bevacizumab and uh, five different FC gamma receptors, uh, going from FC gamma receptor 1 uh, up to FC gamma re receptor 3b. Uh, we had 15 different uh, molecule FC gamma receptors provided by our partner Sinobiological. Uh, 12, uh, nine out of them were his tagged, and five, uh, six of them were biotin tagged. And for all the receptors that had a his tagged, uh, the format was to capture a couple of the monoclonal antibody followed by single cycle or multi cycle kinetics. While for the biotinylated FC gamma receptors, first we immobilized, we created a streptavidin, we functionalized our surface with streptavidin in order to be able to immobilize uh, the biotinylated ligand, followed by single cycle kinetics of bevacizumab. And here we see two examples of that interaction between the monoclonal antibody and uh, FC gamma receptors. And in the table we have uh, all the kinetics information. And here we can see, for example, that the same FC gamma type receptor with a his tag or a biotin tag, the, the KD changes just slightly. The binding kinetics are very similar, while for other, for example, for this other type of molecule, the, the kinetics change quite a bit, depending if it's a biotin tag or a his tag. And all this data was similar to uh, data that is available on Snowbiological's website, data that was uh, generated using a BioCore T200. Leaving the world of biologics, and for just two slides, looking at the world of oligonucleotide interactions, the increasing number of approved nucleic acid therapeutic demonstrates their potential to treat or prevent diseases by targeting genetic blueprints directly in vivo. If we are to come to your lab to a, a demonstration using our uh, ALTA system, what we would test would be a oligomer interaction, interaction between two DNA st strands, a 5 kilodalton biotinylated oligomer as the ligand and a 16 kilodalton oligomer as uh, the analyte. Here is a representative image of just one of the data sets uh, with on rates, uh, while well for a, um, a set of 48, the on and off rate CVs are less than 20%. Uh, as shown in this uh, table, and while well, for KD, uh, the CVs are within the 20 to 30 percent. And for those of you wondering what do those 48 uh, data sets look like, this is where this uh, slide comes into picture. 48 analytes, uh, 240 interactions due to those five uh, automated dilutions on the cartridge. And leaving kinetics for a while and looking at other um, modules like the quantitation module that was released last year, Altos quant modules allow to, allows one to determine active concentration of samples highly accurately. It is sam a crude sample compatible, unlike other techniques the, like ELISA, there are no secondary reagents needed. For all the standards, uh, one standard in, well, there are now 10 uh, automated dilutions, 10 concentrations prepared for that um, uh, to prepare our, uh, to use those data points to have our standard calibration curve using a 5PL curve fitting. And the data generated will look like this. In blue, we're going to have our standards. 10 dilutions, and then in red, for each lane, we can have up to five uh, unknowns, and those unknowns will be placed on the uh, calibration curve. And under it, we're going to have a table summarizing all, all the unknowns and the calculated values. What is great about the Altos quantitation module is the fact that these report points 
uh, can be moved. So your 5P of calibration curve can be um, moved depending or changed uh, the the range. The range is dynamic and it can be changed and that depending where your unknowns lie. And an example of a quantitation uh, assay where uh, antibodies uh, in uh, buffer were quantified with a precision of under 15% error. Once again, in blue, all of our 10 uh, standard curves and in red are unknowns that then are placed on the 5PL calibration curve generated by the analysis software. Alongside quantitation, a screening module was released as well. Also allows to directly screen from crude samples in B cell media, cell lysates or hybridomas. It is possible to process up to 48 samples in less than four hours using the default time, times of the assays. It requires only three microliter of sample consumption. And once the assay is done, data will be presented as a heat map. And here in blue, we're going to have all our binders. In white, our non binders. In gray, our intermediate binders. And uh, alongside the heat map, we're also going to see uh, kinetic data for that one uh, association and dissociation curve. This kinetic data is orientative, and of course, if you want to, to have to well characterize your system, we would recommend running uh, a kinetics uh, characterization for, for those hits that, that you want to characterize further. And an example of screening, this was done with anti, uh, antibody uh, samples that were uh, taken from serum and diluted in PBST. The capture was a 50 kilodalton molecule and the antibodies uh, from the 48 unknowns, 21 turned out as binders and 10 were intermediate and the rest were non-binders. And uh, the latest module that was released is epitope characterization, the one that I mentioned previously. It is uh, the format for the epitope characterization that is used is a classical sandwich with the primary antibody being immobilized on the sensor surface, then capturing the antigen and coming on then with the secondary uh, antibody to see if it binds or it doesn't. It is crude sample compatible and it is possible to process up to 225 interactions in less than 16 hours for a 16 by 16 bin. And the data will be presented as a heat map in a blue, uh, having those uh, antibodies that bind, in white the ones that do not bind, and in gray the intermediate, depending on the thresholds that the user sets, or uh, they can also use the default settings. And an example of epitope characterization uh, that was carried out before the epitope module was released is the, the collaboration with Sinobiological. We were looking at characterizing antiviral targets. This was just a proof of concept where a five, uh, a five by five mini bin was done with using those antibody and the uh, nucleoprote influenza A nucleoproteins. And to other than the bins and the heat maps that we're generating, also to understand how the binders, what a non-binder and a binder uh, looks like, after uh, immobilizing our primary antibody on the surface, we are uh, we have our, we are capturing our antigen. We're binding our antigen, and then these are two curves that are overlaid. In one case, we have a non-binder because the secondary antibody does not bind to the antigen. While in, in this case, we do see a binder, so that uh, changes whether the the, how the antibody is characterized, if they have different epitopes or if they have overlapping epitopes. And often we are uh, asked, and if all the data presented from the app notes has not convinced you so far, we're asked whether we have benchmarked our data against traditional SPR system. We have. We have used two different uh, conventional or traditional SPR systems. In uh, this first example, 
where we did multi-cycle kinetics. Uh, we got analogous results to traditional SPR systems, while ALTO uh, required 100 times less sample per interaction. There were no manual dilutions, there was no degassing, and the data processing is automatic. Also requiring less than 30 minute operator uh, time, while the competitors required more than 90 minutes. And uh, the other uh, comparison against our another competitor, uh, this one done in collaboration with Immunocore. Using single cycle kinetics, we investigated and characterized eight bispecific proteins that had KDs ranging from picomolar, low picomolar, up to micromolar affinities. And as we can see in, in this graph, in blue we have our ALTO data and in yellow uh, the competitor data. We, we see that we had an identical ranking between the two systems. We had uh, very similar uh, kinetic results, while ALTO required only two microliter of sample and uh, minimal operator time on ALTO. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and time, and I would be more than happy to take all your questions. All right. Thank you very much, Dina, for this uh, very informative talk. Um, please feel free, if you have any questions so far, to uh, put them in the chat. Uh, one of the questions that I saw coming in was if you could perhaps, if I rephrase correctly, elaborate a little bit on the use of crude samples in the Alto system. Um, what we have done to date, uh, because Alto has no, there's nothing that can clog, everything happens on a cartridge. So uh, what, what has happened in the past, we would go to demos and people would have, oh, we have these samples that are like might aggregate or we don't know they're big, like the sizes would are not appropriate. For example, particles that would be micrometer in size and they wouldn't try to test it on a, a traditional SPR system. They're like, can you give it a try? We're like, yeah, sure, just <laughs> let's give it a try. And we saw like very nice data. So just like that with the crude sample, uh, you can give it a try, you can test it. The worst that can happen is you would need to just replace the cartridge. Of course, with crude sample, uh, assay optimization is going to be an important part of that because you always want to make sure that you're looking at specific binding. You might have to reduce some non-specific binding uh, due to everything else that is in that supernatum. But the, this is something that also allows you to work with. And we have uh, probably two weeks ago tested something in B-cell supernatums. And we did a, a, a small screening, a 24 analyte screening, and data looked very promising. All right. Excellent, thank you very much. So I guess if you break a cartridge, it's not as disastrous as breaking an entire system uh, because you uh, you clog the pipe. <laughs> exactly. Right, good. Um, uh, another question that I saw coming in was in relation to the software that the Alto uses. Uh, the participant is wondering if it would be possible to, uh, within the software, plan multiple experiments and sort of queue them so you can uh, do them one after the other. Yes, that is something the, the software allows for the cloud version up to 10 cartridges. So let's say you have a very big library, you want to, I don't know, screen 200 analytes, you can design that and once you tell the, the software that you're going to have not 48, but 192 analytes, then it's going to uh, map it to four different cartridges, uh, so you can design it uh, for the moment as um, the, the robotic solution is not there yet. The, the only designing on the software is a possibility, uh, then running it would be having to change the cartridge at the end of each run, but designing it, it is not a problem. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, that is it for so far as I see questions in the uh, in the Q&A screen. Um, if there are no further questions, then I, I think I would 
again, very much like to thank you, uh, Dina, for your time and uh, for this very informative presentation. Uh, I think we've all uh, seen and, and gotten a much better grasp of the advantages that the uh, the Alto system can offer, uh, both in an experimental and in a uh, process sense. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you for attending this webinar today. Um, we will make sure that the recording of this webinar becomes available. Uh, a version of the recording will be sent out to you uh, um, after the webinar is done via email. And if you have any, any further questions or if any questions come up uh, after the webinar has finished, uh, please feel free to reach out to either myself or to my colleagues at Westberg uh, or to the colleagues at, uh, at Nicoya, and we will make sure that you are uh, assisted promptly. Thank you again, everyone, for attending and have a lovely evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.